Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to each and every one of you to our webinar, Three Candid Stories. My name is Bipin Lakhani, and I'm from the Insurance Institute, and I will be your host today. I have the honor of being joined today by three candidates who will share with you their insurance education journey so far. We'll get to the introductions in a second. The IIC felt it was best to let you hear from industry employees, your peers, who were in your shoes not too long ago, a completed CIP, and wanting to go a bit further, but maybe not too sure uh, about what to do. So this is your opportunity to learn from our panel. And thanks to all of you who submitted questions ahead of time. We've done our best to incorporate those into today's session. Your lines are muted, so we won't get any background noise, but as you have questions, please enter these on the right-hand side of the panel of your screen. If we do not get to all of them in the short time we will have together, I will make sure that the panel answers these questions and we'll email them back to everyone that's in attendance. So let's get started. And I'll ask at this point each of our panelists to briefly introduce themselves. And I'll start with you. Melissa? Hi, Bippin. Um, my name is Melissa DeMello. I am an insurance broker who works at Partners Indemnity Insurance Brokers Limited in downtown Toronto. Uh, I work as an account executive on commercial insurance programs for professional associations throughout Canada. I'm currently working towards my advanced CIP. In 2014, I completed my CIP and my CRM while training as an amateur Muay Thai kickboxer. That same year, I won the North American Championship in the United States. My new passion is being a mom to a beautiful baby girl named Autumn who just turned nine, uh, 10 months. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. And Autumn is 10 months old? Yes. And you have, a, you have did, did I hear you correctly? You have a... Um, you're a champion in Muay Thai boxing? Yes. Wow. That yeah, must help yeah. you close a few more sales as an insurance broker. <laughs> it definitely you. helps. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And uh, then I'll uh, I'll turn it over to Key. Key? Good afternoon, everyone. I am a graduate of the Schulich School of Business with a bachelor's degree in financial accounting. I joined Purse Insurance Company, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Economical Insurance, in 2008 as an underwriting trainee. I am currently the manager of personal insurance at Purse, overseeing both the underwriting and business development functions. Purse Insurance provides non-standard auto and property insurance for drivers and homeowners who have difficulty obtaining insurance in the regular markets. Personally, I just recently finished my coursework in the new FCIP stream, and I'm looking forward to what the future has to offer for me. Oh, wow, congratulations, uh, Key. I, I uh, really applaud you in completing your FCIP. So you're with Perth Insurance, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that there are uh, Wholly, old, wholly owned uh, subsidiary of Economical. So I guess you deal in the high risk market and you see a lot of repenters and a lot of repeaters. Lots of both, Bippin, definitely. Lots of both. And which are your favorites? The repeaters. It keeps me in business. <laughs> That's great to hear. All right. Thanks for being here, Key. And uh, our, our final panelist is Caitlin. Hello everyone, it's nice to meet you and I'm glad that you're all here. I'm Caitlin Percy and I'm on the operations and planning team at Intact Insurance. Intact is Canada's leading provider of PNC insurance, uh, having holding 17% of the Canadian market. I personally deal with new initiatives and their integration with our system. Presently I'm building a policy administration system, the first new one in 23 years at Intact. Uh, recently, my team has worked on things such as usage-based insurance, the Ontario auto reform, and geocoding initiatives. I have an honors BA in psychology as well as my CIP and CTFL, which is a testing certification. I'm in the process of completing my second and third CRM courses and have completed my first couple FCI, FCIP courses. I enjoy reading, yoga, and traveling. It's nice to meet you. Wow, it's really good to get to know you too, Caitlin. 
that's quite a, a, a range of interests that you have. And did I hear you correctly? You're doing your CRM program as well as your FCIP at the same time? Wow, that's a, that's a lot of programs to be taking. So uh, as you can see, we have quite a diversified panel on, on the phone. Um, and at this point, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see um, from our audience perspective um, what their roles are. So why don't I launch a quick poll here? Uh, and let me ask the audience, what is your primary function um, in, um, you know, at, at, the, at the place you work at? So I'm going to launch a poll in a minute. And... Um, See the mouse here, apologize. Okay, and we'll just um, give you another few seconds for the, uh, for the results. Five, three, two, one. And you have the results, so quite a Quite a range of folks uh, on the phone as well, uh, panelists. So we have uh, the majority of people are in other roles. We've got quite a large sales and underwriting contingent, and a few from uh, claims and risk management as well. So thank you all again for being here. <clears throat> so with that, you know, let me turn this over to Key for a minute. Key, you've taken the FCIP program after your CIP and your MBA at Schulich. Um, what made you go down this route? What made you take the FCIP program? I felt like it would get me a foot ahead of the rest of the pack. I mean, the crop of FCIP graduates is a bit smaller than the number of CIP graduates. So I think that there's a bit more distinction there. Also, I wanted to broaden my foundation and understanding of the insurance industry as a whole. And I felt that the education that I got from the FCIP stream really contributed to it. In my opinion, if you want to move forward in your career, then it will definitely provide a boost. With the additional designation, you become part of a select group of individuals who've actually worked hard and done it. And it also shows other people with whom you're communicating with that you're invested in the industry and, and in a way you've succeeded. Wow. <clears throat> so uh, so you felt that the, the program gave you... Um, you, you've just finished the six courses. Did it did it give you uh, the opportunity to to show that you were the best of the best? I, I'd like to think so. I think it ultimately helped me develop a better understanding of the insurance industry as a whole. So the new FCIP stream's main focus, in my opinion, is is really to develop tomorrow's leaders. And leadership in today's insurance market is very different than it was 20 years ago. It, it's evolved drastically. So in hindsight, after completing the designation, I do feel that I'm a better leader. Uh, I'm more cognizant of my, of my environment, and I now see my career in more of a three-dimensional um, uh, area instead of two. Okay, that's great. Um, and Melissa, you're taking the advanced CIP. Why that route for you? Well, the number one reason why I took my advanced CIP is because I want to get into the FCIP program. I don't have a university degree, so the fastest, most practical alternate way into the FCIP program is with the advanced CIP designation. Okay. And so do, do you feel in that sense that the advanced CIP is helping you fill that gap that you, you may not have had at the university level to prepare you for the FCIP? And if so, how is it doing, doing that? Yeah, I think it really is. It's definitely helping me feel a lot more confident um, going into the FCIP. Uh, for example, I took um, the first, one of the first classes I took is called Critical Thinking. And this particular class helped me prepare better essays. It taught me how to research better. It taught me um, how to think more critically. So I think I think this this class is really going to help me um, feel a lot more confident going to my FCIP. So I think it's definitely helping. And so it's giving you some skills in between to to get you ready. That's great. Um, and Caitlin, you have you mentioned that um, 
um, you're, you're working with systems, you're doing some testing, you're doing some business analysis, uh, you would have what I would call a non-core insurance role, so probably not in risk management or sales or underwriting um, or claims. So what made you take the, um, the FCIP? Uh, first off, I would like to say that uh, the FCIP definitely adds value uh, on the front of applying for more jobs, uh, the way people view you, as well as it gives you help in an IT background like mine as well in being able to um, really know and understand the impacts that certain things that are going on in the industry have on uh, where the future of insurance is moving and what new initiatives we'll be taking and um, how different different faucets of the industry collide um, within your everyday work. And you're also doing the risk management, and I don't want to dwell too much on the risk management, but uh, how come you're doing both? Um, I'm a very ambitious person, <laughs> and I like punishment. And um, <laughs> I think CRM really gives you a different perspective of the way to view the industry initiatives that we're kind of going in the, over in the FCIP. We're looking at strategy and we're looking at leadership and we're looking at um, the financial basis of the insurance industry. And I think being able to see that kind of from both viewpoints, both of them impact each other and, and uh, work in tandem. So I feel like one kind of helps you boost the other. Wow, that's great to hear. And you mentioned that, uh, you know, the FCIP gives you some opportunities for more jobs at Intact. Um, is that a requirement at your employer for certain types of roles? How, do, how does your employer see that? It's not a requirement by any means, but I do think that it's viewed in a very positive light. For example, my team lead uh, is also attaining his FCIP and has kind of uh, given me a role model to look up to in that in that process. Okay, hey, that's great. So, you know, I, I know the uh, courses like the Advanced CIP and the FCIP have a very different learning style. Uh, at the Insurance Institute, we call it an asynchronous style. So I'm going to do a quick poll before we, uh, we ask you a little bit about that. But let me poll the audience to see um, what the term asynchronous might mean to you. So we have a couple of options there uh, for you to choose from, and I'll give you about 12 seconds to answer the poll. Does this term asynchronous mean? Okay, we'll give you uh, three seconds. Two. And these are the results. Wow, so the term asynchronous means at the same time, at different times, coordinated, at random times. And I like a few of you have a sense of humor in a different dimension. Well, if somebody ever asked me what the word asynchronous meant, I probably would have said in a different dimension. Um, at this point, I'm not going to really reflect on the correct answer because I think there's different ways of learning. So I'd like to go to, go to the panel at this point and say, the learning style for you, um, can, can you highlight for me your experience with the learning style? How is it? What is the logistical component of it? So, Key, you've been in the, you know, in the style uh, the, long, the longest. Um, so can you share your experience so far? So the new FCIP stream is done completely online via correspondence. So for me, it works really well because of my unpredictable work and personal schedules. Uh, it made it very difficult for me to commit to a consistent date and time for the classroom environment. I often found myself doing my readings and assignments at, say, 1 o'clock in the morning on weekends, which worked out perfectly. So the online setting really tailored towards people who have a lot going on in their lives. 
the learning process itself is, is different compared to the traditional classroom learning environment. It's a different type of workload. It isn't about memorizing a book, dumping the information, and then deleting it from your mind after the exam. You, you actually have to think critically. Um, there's a lot of reading to do, but the information is, is interesting and very relevant to current issues as they relate to leadership and insurance. So this made my 40 to 45 minute train ride to and from work a little bit easier to digest just because I was actually engaged in the reading material and it allowed me to critically reflect on my, my own personal experiences. So it is very different. It's all online um, and that's great. So you can log in at different times as you mentioned? That's correct. Okay. And uh, Melissa, how do you find this uh, this style of learning so far? Can you share some of your thoughts? Sure, I actually really like it, and when I, it's definitely a lot different than the CIP classes. Um, you, it is all online, um, and you have weekly group discussions. You do have a facilitator, um, but you don't have those midterm exams. You don't have a final exam. They're all essay writing. So. For me, um, I was a bit nervous because I, I kind of like the classroom setting, but when I got into it, I realized that um, the online is, is, is such a convenience, especially when your life starts to get very crazy. Like I have a 10-month-old baby, so you know I logged in around her nap times, around her sleep schedule, 10 o'clock, 11, 12 o'clock at night. I uploaded assignments at 5 o'clock in the morning, so it was very accommodating. Um, the group discussions were amazing. I actually learned a lot. You, you learn, there's all different types of people that are taking these courses. They're not just brokers or underwriters. You have adjusters. You have uh, risk managers. So you get to read their input, and you learn a lot from how they're interpreting what they're reading. So you see different points of views from everybody with, within the industry. Um, so it's, it's, so far, it's working out great. It, I, I really like the format. Well, that's great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. And I think your, um, your comments have prompted a, a question from, uh, you know, from, from the, uh, the audience here. It says, no exams. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. Well, there, um, there are no midterm or final exams, but there are final essays and there are assignments that are due. So you, you'll know when all of your assignments are due, um, so you can prepare and you can organize your time well to make sure that you are hitting those deadlines. So you definitely have to be aware of the deadlines within the course. Um, it's just that you, you don't have a scheduled midterm exam where you have to be at the institute or you have to be logged in online to, to do these, uh, these exams. It's, it's all essay style writing. Okay, so you have weekly deadlines for like assignments and things of that nature. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely, you have to be mindful of the deadlines for sure. Okay, that's yeah. great. Well, I hope, I hope that answers the, the, uh, the, the uh, viewer's question. Um, Caitlin, how, how do you find uh, the style of asynchronous learning? I think it's really beneficial because I'm doing two courses at once. It gives me the ability to kind of fit them into my schedule. As he was saying, uh, during my transit, I like to do a lot of reading there. Um, as well as uh, I can book a meeting room after work and go and sit by myself and get the, the assignments done. Um, I find it really beneficial, as Melissa said, to have the different viewpoints as well. We're getting people from all over Canada and all different types of job positions and titles. So it kind of brings you down to a common ground where everyone is trying to achieve the same um, end goal, but at the same time, um, it allows you to kind of get their input and see different uh, different viewpoints on many different subjects, which is that's that's great to know. I you know I think I think an online style um, will fit a lot of uh, lifestyles. It may not fit every single lifestyle, uh, but I think there's certainly the advantages. And thanks thanks to you for for highlighting some of these um, now. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, but um, Caitlin and Key, in the FCIP, you do have some final exams in the first four courses. Is that correct, Key? 
That's correct. So there is a final exam, but the weight of the final exam is not as heavy compared to the traditional CIP courses. So a larger portion of the grade focuses on weekly assignments, weekly contributions to online discussions, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a little bit more uh, leeway uh, leading up to the final exam. Okay, and then the uh, fourth course and the uh, sorry, the fifth course and the last integrative capstone project. There are no exams. These are just case studies and projects that you work on on your own, right? That is correct. Yes. And what was your last uh, capstone project on? What was the topic? So I just want to give you a little bit of background on this first, Bipin. So the, the the final course, the sixth course in the new FCIP stream, it spans two semesters, and it's a capstone project, and uh, it's basically free reign for for the individual to to select whatever topic he or she wants to investigate. So, uh, purse insurance is a relatively small division of economical insurance, and we are a team of of about 30 underwriters. So one of the biggest challenges at purse is the issue of attracting, engaging, and retaining talent. Generally, insurance is not the first choice amongst those selecting a career path, so the talent pool that we pick from is much smaller. So once recruitment is completed, the next hurdle to, is to keep staff engaged. The, the organizational hierarchy at Perth is relatively flat, so movement and progression is limited, which makes it very difficult to retain staff in the long run. Um, ultimately, my capstone project focused on identifying the barriers with respect to attracting, engaging, and retaining talent, reviewing alternatives to address these issues, and then ultimately developing an action plan moving forward. A lot of the research that I did, particularly with respect to millennials entering the for workforce, was a big eye-opener for me. Their needs and wants are completely different when compared to the Gen X and Gen Y employees. So it was definitely a, a huge learning experience. Wow, that sounds like it's quite interesting. And I know we've had quite some interesting submissions, and I'll talk about that a little later um, during those uh, capstone projects. So yours sounded uh, quite exciting. Um, glad to hear it. Um, so I, 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 we've got a couple of questions here directed at some of you individually, um, but I want to come to that in a minute. I want to know how soon you guys started your, you know, next level of education after the CIP. But before I do that, I'd like to launch a third poll. And that poll, I just want to hear from the audience um, in terms of how long has it been, uh, how long have they had a CIP in hand so far? So the poll is open, and I'll give you 17 seconds to, to answer that. Five, and we'll close the poll now. And there are the results. So nearly two-thirds of the folks online have just graduated. Congratulations. And some of you have had your CIP for um, up to about 10 years. Um, that's, that's great to hear. So. Can I ask the panelists, Caitlin, how soon after your CIP did you start the program you're in, the FCIP? Uh, well, Bippin, I was still in business of insurance when I actually applied to the FCIP, and I started um, the next semester after as soon as I could. So I hadn't actually even officially received the transcript from my CIP, and I had already finished the first quarter. Oh, wow. So right away. How about you, uh, Key? I actually waited six months, took a break, and then started again. All right, you needed to put your feet up. I think um, um, some of the folks on online might want to do the same. Um, <clears throat> and how about you, uh, Melissa? Uh, well, I finished my uh, I, I finished my F my CIP and my um, CRM at the same time, and then as soon as the advanced CIP 
uh, was open, I, I applied right away. I, I took the class right away. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> some of you are very ambitious, and you, you take that right off, right off the bat. Um, there's a question here, um, and uh, Caitlin, this question is directed at you. It says, Caitlin, um, what, where do you see yourself in five years? Very good question. In five years, I will definitely be completed my FDIP as well as my CRM. Uh, I'm looking towards maybe getting a PMP and maybe getting into project management. I've really enjoyed kind of being on the forefront of all of Impact's initiatives. Um, yeah, maybe even my my uh, analyst uh, designation would be kind of neat too. Wow, I count about six designations for you. You've got a lot of studying to do, Caitlin. Um, <laughs> that's great. Um, but that's a, that's a really good question I can ask, uh, you know, of you too, Melissa. Where do you see yourself uh, five years from now? Well, I really, really want my FCIP designation. So right after my advanced CIP, I'm hoping within the next five years I'll have my FCIP designation. Um, and I, I really want to stay in the insurance industry. I want to grow in the industry. I want to see, you know, if I be a broker or maybe move over to the underwriter side. Um, but outside of insurance, maybe I'm hoping to compete again and um, in kickboxing, hopefully win another belt and maybe grow my family a bit more. Go, Melissa. Go and yeah. get, a, get a championship for Canada. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so if you uh, actually go into underwriting, you know, the brokers would say you've moved to the dark side. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Don't tell all the other brokers. <laughs> um, Anki, uh, five years for you? I plan on taking a break from schooling for at least a few months and then possibly pursue the CRM designation. Many of my many of the aspects of my role involve risk analysis and risk management, so I think that the risk management stream would be very beneficial. Aside from my own development, it might sound a bit cliche, but I really want to give back to the insurance community. Um, currently, I am an insurance ambassador, so periodically throughout the school year, I represent the Insurance Institute, Perth and Economical Insurance, at school career fairs and information sessions to talk of the industry. So moving forward, I really want to do more of that, to educate people about the great benefits that this industry has to offer. Wow. Well, there's, I guess, opportunities. Uh, are you currently an ambassador for the Insurance Institute? That's correct. Okay. So there's opportunities like that as well. That's great. Um, and I'll throw this out to the panel. Um, you've, you've, you've obviously, obviously gone through a CIP designation and, and you're just either completed your FCIP or in the middle of uh, your advance in your FCIP. Um, what advice would you offer to somebody that's on the phone right now thinking about what they might want to do or even if they're going to pursue one of the designations, what advice would you offer them? Um, Caitlin, why don't I start with you? Uh, my advice to anyone on the phone would be to just go for it. I mean, uh, taking and continuing your education can only benefit you and those around you and having knowledge of things outside of your everyday realm can only expand your ability to do your job and uh, increase the capacity in which you're able to think about things within the insurance industry. I'd say there's no time like the present. <laughs> wow, okay, good advice. Um, Key, how about you? What advice would you give anyone? Without a doubt, Bippin, I'd say do it if you're interested. If you want to move forward with your career, then it will definitely be a boost. The material that is learned in these courses is very relevant to leadership and insurance in today's marketplace. Um, the FCIP stream not only focuses on the theory, but it also deals with practical, real-life issues affecting the insurance market today. And it's a very interesting workload for sure. And once you finish one course, you're going to want to move on to the next. I guarantee it. And once you finish all six courses, you'll definitely get a sense of accomplishment like I do. And if you're a leader in the market, then this is without a doubt an important piece to your puzzle. That's an interesting thought, Key. And, I, you know, I think um, 
you know, myself included, and when I finished my CIP, there was almost a sense of relief, like, phew, it's done. Um, maybe, you know, quite different. You mentioned the learning was very different. I guess with the CIP, you do have a lot more memor memorization of work. And you mentioned accomplishment as the difference with the FCIP. Um, can you help us just understand what those two sentiments would be when you finish? Because some people yeah, just definitely. want to take a break, I think, from the CIP. For sure. With respect to the CIP designation, it was a lot of it was theory, a lot of the material was theory, which is a good thing because it really helps the individual develop a solid foundation of their understanding of the insurance experience. The FCIP takes that theory and to the next level. So it really incorporates emerging issues and real life current issues into the learning curve. And at the end of it, you really feel like you've accomplished something and you're a more effective leader. Well, that's great. And Melissa, um, what advice would you leave our audience with? Uh, I will. I definitely recommend the advanced CIP. So I, I definitely, I definitely think that if you're thinking about doing it, you should do it. And you know, as long as you're you're keeping up with your readings, um, you're applying yourself just like you would to your CIP. You would definitely be successful with the advanced CIP. These designations for brokers are very important. Um, they're highly respected, and I think to keep moving forward with your designations and your education will help you in your career. So just being disciplined, keeping up with your readings, and just going for it, I think you'll be very successful, and and there's lots of benefit ahead. So I definitely recommend it. Oh, that's great advice. So with that, I want to I want to launch uh, launch another poll, a quick poll this time, just to poll the audience. Now that you've heard our panelists a little bit more, what are you thinking of next? What would the next step be for you? And we'll just have that panel, uh, just have that launched in a second. There's the poll. What will the next level of education be for you? Okay, we'll close that poll. Okay, and the, uh, there's the poll results right there. So the majority of you are still not sure and I hope uh, you'll get an opportunity to connect with our panelists uh, and, and uh, you know help help them help you decide, or even connect with us. And uh, uh, a lot of you also want to do the FCIP, which is which is phenomenal. So just a reminder to everyone on the line that registration and admissions to the programs open on June the first. The info is on our website. Um, at insuranceinstitute.ca, and you can always call us as well. But at this point, I want to sincerely thank our panel for their time and their sharing today. I believe our audience would have benefited from your respective journeys, and, and perhaps you've helped them decide on their next step. And can I, just before I let you, let you uh, sign off, uh, panel, if there's anybody online that wants to connect with you on LinkedIn, um, are they okay to reach out to do so? Definitely. Okay, that that's great. <laughs> awesome, that would be, that'd be great. And to our audience, I hope we've been able to answer the majority of the questions you submitted. Uh, if not, please continue to submit them or call us, and we would be happy to provide the guidance you may need. So thanks, everyone, so much for your time and attention today. And we will um, stay tuned, and we will connect with you shortly again. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.